Good morning and welcome back to another episode of Marketo Fu. Uh, my name is Joe Wrights and what I want to talk about on this episode is basically uh, I want to start a mini series on the new email editor, so email editor 2.0. Uh, if you're unaware, uh, Marketo made a new editor available back in I think the summer release of last year, summer or fall, somewhere in there. And uh, there's a lot of cool features in it. Um, I would say probably the split among my clients is 50-50, if not a little bit less than half are actually using the new editor. Um, but what I want to kind of walk through is kind of the, the couple different areas and then you know how it's cool. So uh, I'll start with how it's cool. Uh, it, it, it makes things a lot more drag and drop like a MailChimp or a... Uh, uh, just a simpler wissy wig like that, uh, but it still gives you kind of the robustness of you know your your standard Mar Marketo templates. So uh, whereas before, like one thing we used to do a lot is we would save multiple versions of the same template with you know uh, three CTAs, four CTAs, five CTAs. In this way, in in the new editor, you can just clone blocks. They're called modules, and we'll cover that in a future video. But I want to at least highlight it now that. Um, it's something really, really cool with the new editor. So what we're going to look at today, though, is global variables. So like these are easy things that um, oops, uh, when you're uh, updating your emails, uh, you want to change quick things like uh, you know, background colors, CTA button colors, uh, little bits of text links without having to go into each individual editable section and doing it. It kind of gives you that that scalability of like a tokenized process. So I'm going to walk you through how to add these things to your templates and what they look like. So first things first, let me uh, share my screen here. Righteous. So the email template that I've prepped is uh, one of my old favorites. Uh, it's got a background image with a fallback color, some basic CTAs, headlines, a tokenized logo that has a nice little rollover effect in some email clients, uh, some various you know sections with text and more CTA links, some more text, uh, you know that background image again with a CTA. All of these individual colored blocks are. Uh, are going to be modules. So you could add or remove these, slide them around in the email in, in, any, in any combination. So that is um, that is the nuts and bolts of how this email works. And you can see when I blew it up big, um, whoops. When I blew it up big, I uh, blew up the image because it's a responsive email. See how that works? Um, yeah. So what this looks like in the Marketo editor when you're done is, you know, you have all your normal things over here. When I have the modules built in, you'll have a little thing over here that you can drag them in and slide them up and down and move them around. But uh, for the global variables, what you're going to want to look at is this little bit here. So you can see this makes it super easy. If I wanted to change uh, the background accent of like this section to, I don't know, something really garish like. Uh, pink. I can just select the color here, put in whatever my brand colors are, and away it goes. If I wanted to change, similarly, this gray section to something maybe a little darker, I could easily do so. Now, why you'd want to change it to pink, I don't know. But you saw when I made this darker, this text becomes unreadable. So I also have uh, you know, a, the ability to edit some fonts in here, just real quick, real easy. Makes it very easy for anybody that's not a uh, web developer just to come in here and edit things. And then finally, uh, this is just bothering me, so I'm going to change that back. But uh, the other cool thing is, like, you know, if if I were to say make this template available, uh, you could very easily change the CTA and all that to match your branding. So uh, some brand colors I worked with in the past. Uh, Plus two points to anyone that can guess who that is. Uh, but you can easily see, you can change the buttons across all these things. So there's a few things you've got to do in the template itself to uh, to enable this, this kind of quick customization. And that's what I'm going to show you. It works very similar to a tokenized process. But um, let me change all this stuff back because it's going to bother me. It works very similar to a tokenized process, but basically once you have it set up, you get this global variables thing and you can swap things out. And if I did want to change this background image, I've got that as a global variable too, 
where I've just got this as an image link from the design studio. So if I swap this out, that'll swap back. Uh, I've got a fallback color already dialed in as well within the, the template CSS. So if I'm sending to Outlook 365, for example, and they can't render a background image, uh, I've got my fallback right there. So it makes it super trainable for any level of technical expertise. Um, so with that said, I'm going to jump over to Dreamweaver real quick, where I like to edit things. And you'll notice uh, this is just the HTML for this template. And you'll notice when you look over here, everything looks jacked up because I've got some things like the logo that are pulling from tokens. Uh, anything with the colors, for some reason, defaults to weird colors when you use the uh, the uh, uh, variable stuff. But anyway, so to back up, to set up a variable, uh, I usually do this at the very top of the uh, of the of the file within the header, and you add a tag, a meta tag, like these. And there's a, there's a, some classes you can check these on uh, docs.marketo.com. Uh, the most common ones are Marketo string, like I like I'm using, and Marketo color. Uh, there, there's a few other ones that you can use, but they're basically what what they're going to enable you to do is just like a tokenized process uh, or, or just like defining an edible region you define the id for who this affects and then a friendly name so that you know when you're looking at it in here in the in the template itself uh these are the friendly names these are the marketo names marketo friendly or yeah marketo name so background accent one you see i've got background accent one and that's just how they're going to appear uh and then you set a default value, just like you would a token. So white, a gray, black, uh, a dark gray. Uh, I've got all my colors. This is the blue for uh, anybody that's wondering. But um, you can set up colors like that. You can set up uh, text values. So like, you know, an image link, for example. Uh, and, you know, what I've done down... And so to make the template know to use these in the right spots, uh, let's scroll down to, say... Uh, do I want to use that one? Maybe let's use this one. So in the uh, in this the inline CSS, you'll see that I use something just like this, where it's just color, you know, the normal CSS command, and then uh, this bit here, dollar sign, uh, squiggly bracket, and then the the ID, and then squiggly bracket close. You just do that like a style, just like you would a regular token, and that's basically it. So it's going to know, it's going to pull whatever the CTA background color is for uh, C or yeah, CTA background color. We're looking at the button right now. Uh, so that's going to be that two F that that blue color, and that's why it's rendering blue. So when you pull that into Marketo and you approve the template uh, across all these, so I've got I've got it set up for like background colors and CTAs and just that background image link. But when you pull it into Marketo, you uh, and you approve it, you create your first template with it, this is what you get. And if I were to uh, put any other image link here or change these colors accordingly, or even just swap out these links themselves, I can do it all from this one spot instead of opening up each individual editable region and doing it that way. Now, you're still gonna have to edit the editable region um, just to uh, change text and stuff like that. But uh, more on that to come with modules. You can get as, as granular with these variables as you want. You can make them, uh, when you have the module set up, you can you can edit this CTA button separate from like this one kind of thing. And it just makes things super, super cool and easy. So, um, but that's obviously a, a very long technical conversation. So where I am going to, where am I at? Here we go. Cool. Uh, yeah, so obviously that gets very technical very quickly. And, uh, you know, it's super easy. It's just like using tokens and regular inline CSS uh, to kind of draw those those values based on the, the uh, variable ID. But uh, if you have any questions, please send them in the comments. Uh, there's tons of documentation on docs.marketo.com of all the various uh, variable types you can use. I only highlighted two here. Um, I believe there's one for images as well that you can use. Um, but yeah, definitely keep the conversation going in the community uh, or, or on YouTube here. So uh, next episode, we're going to cover uh, modules and kind of show you how those work within the template. But uh, this has been another episode of Marketo Foo, and my name is Joe Wrights. Talk soon.